Good morning. Welcome to Bethany this morning and such a beautiful sunny morning that we can really see our stained glasses this morning. Um, I would like to welcome all the Petersons and Streeters. It's always wonderful. They fill up three rows. It's, it's awesome. <laughs> so anyway, um, it, 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 um, this is the 4th of July weekend and it's all scattered out, but it's also always wonderful to have people visiting here in Bethany, especially ones that their original home was here. Um, I have a quick announcement. Uh, I was a grandma again last week, and, and it all worked out well. <laughs> and I also had my birthday, but that doesn't matter. But anyway, <laughs> uh, we welcome you to the service today. Um, do I do the confession? Okay. Um, but <laughs> We're a little loose this morning after fireworks last night and so forth. <laughs> so anyway, welcome. Glad you're here. Welcome, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Lily Brondike. I'm the pastor here at Bethany Lutheran Church, and it is so good to worship with you this morning. A special welcome to all of those who are worshiping with us over our live stream on Facebook and over our radio broadcast ministry. It's such a cool thing that we get to worship together as the body of Christ, no matter where we are. It's a very welcoming thing, right? It's a holiday weekend. I know there are lake cottages up here that people may be at, and yet we get to gather across space, even across time, to worship. And as we think about that kind of welcome and hospitality, I'd like to invite you into worship today with words from our gospel. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me. These are words from Jesus, talking about a radical kind of welcome that shares God's love with the world. So as we contemplate that welcome and hospitality, I invite you to immerse yourselves fully in this worship experience, whether you're having the worst week of your life or the best week of your life. Whether you woke up on the right or wrong side of the bed this morning, you are here, you are most welcome here, and I invite you to rise as we begin worship with words of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned, we have hurt our community, we have squandered your blessings, we have hoarded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, Forgive us and grant us your mercy. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned. We have failed to be honest. We have lacked the courage to speak. We have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
before we sing our gathering hymn, I invite you into a time of prayer. We pray this prayer in unison, so I invite you to find the prayer of the day printed in your insert that says today's readings at the very top under prayer of the day. Let us pray. O oh God, you direct our lives by your grace and your words of justice and mercy reshape the world. Mold us into a people who welcome your word and serve one another through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you to find our gathering hymn on your pink insert.
The first reading this morning is from Jeremiah. The prophet Jeremiah spoke to the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. And the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words that you have prophesied and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. But listen now to this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied side war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of the prophet comes true, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. The word of the Lord. This morning we will speak responsively Psalm 89. Your love, O Lord, forever will I sing. From age to age, my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. For I am persuaded that your steadfast love is established forever. When you have set your faithfulness firmly in the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. I will establish your line forever and preserve your throne for all generations. Happy are the people who know the festal shout. They walk, O Lord, in the light of your presence. They rejoice daily in your name. They are jubilant in your righteousness. For you are the glory of their strength. And by your favor, our might is exalted. Truly, our shield belongs to the Lord, our King and the Holy One of Israel. The second reading is from Romans. Do not let sin exercise dominion in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. No longer present, your numbers, your members to sin as instruments of wickedness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Should we sin because we are not under law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you, having once been slaves of sin, have become obedient from the heart to the form of teaching to which you were entrusted, and that you have been set free from sin have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to greater and greater iniquity, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were freed in regard to righteousness. So what advantage did you then get from the things of which you are now ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been freed from sin and enslaved to God, the advantage you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. this time, I'd like to invite any kids worshiping with us this morning to come on forward. All right, come and make yourselves comfortable up here. I'll be right back. We need a little help this morning. Oh, hey. 
hey, how's everyone doing? Good. How's your weekend going? Anything exciting happen? You turned six. That's two hands worth of numbers. That's crazy. How is it being six? Good. Have you noticed any big changes? Not yet, all right. You've grown taller? Cool, that's super awesome. Um, how's everyone else doing? Let me coordinate this. Huh. I am wondering about a lot of things this morning, but especially I'm wondering about like any fun get to know you games you guys have ever played. Do you know what I mean by a get to know you game? Like, no, yeah, like, okay. Have you ever made a new friend? Yes. So when you make a new friend, what are some first things you say to one another? Ah, your name, that's important, right? It's good to know each other's names, right? You make friends all the time. What do you talk about with your friends? You just say hi. Do you ever talk about maybe like your favorite color? No. How will your friends know what your favorite color is though? You don't know. What about like a favorite animal or a favorite thing to do? What's your favorite sport to do? Swimming. 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 Wow. Lots of swimmers up here. That is not my favorite sport. I haven't figured out the breathing in the water thing, right? That's the secret? Yeah. Yeah, you let me know. We'll Ooh, fun. So when we first meet someone and we first meet a new friend, we have to share a bit about ourselves with each other, right? Why do we have to do that? What's, why, why? What's that all about? Oh, so you can get to know each other. Is it important to know the people who are our friends? Yeah. Is it a way that we show people that we care about them and that we love them and we want them to feel comfortable? Yeah. In our gospel today, it's a really short one, which is cool. I like it when they're short. Um, we hear Jesus talk about welcoming people, which is like a nice way of saying making friends with people, making people feel comfortable and like they're cared for. So I kind of wanted to do a little bit of an exercise today. You could call it a get to know you game. So maybe after today, you can say that you played a get to know you game. How does that sound? Cool. All right, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna write a poem together. Do you guys like writing poems? Yeah, I knew you did. That's why I picked this. All right, so we're gonna start. The first thing we need for this poem is everyone's names and how you spell it. Do people want to write their name? So I cannot spell them wrong. Let's start with Aline. I know how to spell your name. All right, we got to start with people's names. Why? Because people's names are important, right? It's important to call our friends by their names. Yeah. Right there, just right there, that's fine. Are you a name speller? Yes, no, yeah. You can't read? <laughs> All right. You're starting to learn. Do you want to take a stab at it? A shot? Like oh, rock on. This is fun. You can just write it where you can reach. That's the cool thing about get to know you games. There's no wrong way. Oh, round of applause. That's awesome. All right, and then I'm going to write my name too. All right, we got our names up here. All right, next we need favorite colors. You can shout these out to me. Purple, great favorite color. Blue, that is also an excellent favorite color. Malin? Pink. Oh, Pink and blue. And I'm gonna add green to the mix. All right, next we need a favorite animal. Yes. Yeah. Dog and cat, oh, we got lots of favorites. Dog and cat. Bunnies. Ooh. 
oh, bunnies times, I'm gonna say four, and I'm going to add giraffes. Those were at zoos, do they not count because they're at zoos? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so this is what we need to write a poem. So I'm gonna start, we're gonna have three lines to our poems. One, two, three. And I'm gonna start each line of our poem with I am. And then we're gonna shout these words together. Does that kind of make sense? But we gotta shout them, right? Because we gotta make sure the people in the back can hear. Does that sound okay? Are we good shouters? Ma, are you good at shouting, Malin? Yeah. I knew it. All right. I am Aline, Andon, Pastor Lily, and Malin. We are purple, blue, pink, blue again, green. We are. more. Here's the thing I want you to remember about the kind of welcome that Jesus gives us. Jesus gives us the kind of welcome so that we can know Jesus through knowing one another. So things, even though it seems kind of silly, like knowing each other's favorite colors or knowing each other's favorite animals, those are ways we get to know people. And to know people is to know who Jesus is. And to know who Jesus is is to know that God loves each and every one of you and all those people out there too and all of the people outside those doors in the whole entire world more than we could ever count. More than six even. Well, God loves you more than that even. It's so crazy. And so I want you to remember that getting to know people That's so crazy. We should do that after church today. I can't count that high, never mind, I'm out. All right, I want you to remember that. And I want you to remember that it's great to pray to God. So let's stand up, because we're gonna pray together. And to pray together, we always have to stretch, because praying's a big thing. Thanks for going along with me, Aline. You're being a great sport. All right, are you all stretching out there? We're about to say a pretty big prayer. That's right, warm up. Touch your toes. All right, reach up high. Reach your arms out wide, wrap Jesus into a hug, and everyone is invited to repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God thank, you for today. thank you for today. Thank you for friends. Thank you for friends. We, get we get to know. And new friends. And new friends. We, get we get to ask new questions about. about. We know that you Love us, Love us and the whole world. The whole world. Through, Jesus Through Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, friends. I'd, you can go back to your families and whoever you're sitting with. I invite everyone else to stand as we welcome today's gospel. respond with the words, thanks be to God. Jesus said to the twelve, 
Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly, I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. I invite you this morning to think about a time when you felt a strong sense of belonging in a new place. A time when you were so welcomed that being at home was as natural as breathing air. Do you have an example in your mind? Or did your mind jump to a time when you didn't belong? Did you remember a feeling of not belonging, a feeling of not being welcomed or of not fitting in? Belonging is such a natural desire to a human being. We want to belong to groups or to people or to ideas. Belonging is a core desire of who we are. Maybe that's why when we're asked about moments of belonging, the pain of not belonging comes to the surface. Maybe since belonging is so core, Moments of not belonging live in our memory with a little more poignancy. I'd like, to, I'd like you to hold on to those memories, the ones that initially surfaced up. I do hope you were able to pull out a memory of belonging, of being welcomed. And I'd like you to identify in that memory, what was it that made you feel so welcomed. Hold on to that as well. Welcome matters. Being welcomed or not being welcomed are memories that live with us and shape us our entire lives. So it makes sense that we hear Jesus in today's gospel say, whoever welcomes you welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Note that this is not a command from Jesus. Jesus does speak some commands. Jesus does tell us some things to do. This is not one of them. It's not an order. It's just a statement. To welcome is to welcome Jesus. To welcome Jesus is to welcome God. To be honest, it might have been easier if Jesus had commanded this kind of welcome. If welcoming had been an order. We know it's important. Recall those memories of being welcomed and unwelcome. To welcome and to be welcomed is an important part of being. Here Jesus tells us to welcome others is how we welcome him. Yet to welcome asks us to put ourselves on the outside of belonging, into the mindset of a visitor, a guest, or even an outsider, in order to anticipate the needs and desires. After belonging in a place or in a community for long enough, tapping into that kind of mindset, the mindset of an outsider, can be a real challenge. We forget the awkwardness of the first time being in a new place or meeting a new group of people. It's easy after a while to turn a blind eye to the unwelcoming parts of places, of communities, and even of ourselves. We forget and we minimize and we just deal 
with those things that don't reflect Jesus' radical portrayal of welcome. It's why new people and new things are so important to healthy and thriving communities. Newness reminds us of our calling as followers of Jesus to think about and to embody welcome. It reminds us that welcome cannot be routine or standardized, but is an active and breathing process that requires our attention and our love. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me. We have to be able to welcome the you, and the you is as diverse and as numerous as there are people on this planet. As we get ready to celebrate July 4th, or as we continue our celebrations of the 4th of July, my mind begins to think about that kind of welcome how radical, how inclusive, and how core welcome is in the history of our country. In New York Harbor on Liberty Island sits the Statue of Liberty, formerly titled Liberty Enlightening Our World. On a plaque on the statue, a poem embodies this kind of welcome, titled The New Colossus. Not like the brazen giant of Greek fame with conquering limbs of stride from land to land. Here, at our sea-washed sunset gates shall stand a mighty woman with a torch whose flame is the imprisoned lightning and her name, Mother of Exile. From her beacon hand glows worldwide welcome. Her mild eyes command the air-bridged harbor that twin cities frame. Keep, ancient lands, your storied pomp, cries she. With silent lips, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, tempest tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door by Jewish American Emma Lazarus. Give me your tired, your poor, huddled masses yearning to breathe free, a worldwide welcome. As we celebrate the establishment of the United States and the Declaration of Independence, we remember our relatively short and incredibly storied history. The learning curve, the victories and the losses, the proud and the not so proud moments. We remember that worldwide welcome has always been professed to be in the very DNA of our founding and our formation as a country. We are proud of those ideals and of this welcome. Whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly, I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. Welcome, true and radical welcome, like Jesus talks about, prioritizes the needs of others, the needs of newcomers and outsiders and foreigners and those who have not been welcomed over the needs of those who have already found their belonging in a community. It recognizes that newness is essential to welcome and to growth and to vitality. To welcome asks us to remember the best versions of ourselves and to consider the needs of others and to acknowledge that the body of Christ dwells in each and every one of us coming together. We fail at this. Of course. We all have examples of not being welcomed, and we all probably have examples of being the ones who did not welcome. The good news, my friends, is that we can try again. The good news of Jesus Christ is that we are not judged by the worst moments in our lives, by the poorest decisions we have made, or our most unkind moments to our siblings in Christ. We are judged 
by what Jesus has already done and continues to do for all of creation. You are loved and named beloved and already known in the best possible light. Mistakes and missteps are not a finish line, but an opportunity. We confess, as we do at the beginning of each worship service, and we hear God's words of forgiveness through Jesus Christ. We try again, working together to embody the kind of welcome we know from God through Jesus and the power of the Spirit. For all the times that you have felt like you don't belong, hear this. God knew you before you were born. God created you with such intention to belong and to know love that God became human in Jesus so that you might know you are never alone, but you always belong. Through Jesus, you will always belong. The Holy Spirit will continue to move through you, through the entire body of Christ, creating welcome and belonging and calling you to do the exact same thing. You are called to belong in the same way that you are called to invite others to belong. You are called and you are equipped to share the good news that through Jesus, all find a home in God. Today's gospel comes on the tale of Jesus sending out his disciples to share the news that the Messiah had indeed come. That's the thing about Jesus' welcome. It's not about staying where you are. Jesus tells us to go out and to welcome. The Statue of Liberty faces away from the city, out to the ocean, looking out past the harbor to welcome folks to her shores. As followers of Christ, we're called to face the world, to go out into the world, going to places that are known and unknown, going out to people who need to hear the good news, that they have been welcomed, that they have been called beloved, and they have a place of belonging through Jesus Christ. You are welcomed, and you are called to go out and to welcome. You're loved beyond measure, and you are called to go out and to share that love without measure. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Amen.
gathered with the whole church on earth across country lines, I invite you to confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Trusting in God's abundant mercy, let us offer our prayers for a world in need. We pray for the church, for wisdom to heed the voices of prophets in our midst who cast a vision of God's promised future, for courage to welcome people whom society rejects, for resolve to serve all in need. God, in your mercy. We pray for creation, for Lake Michigan and the Ford River, for the Escanaba River and the Days River, for all rivers, lakes, oceans, and streams, for lands experiencing scorching heat, drought, and wildfires, for conservation organizations and environmental activists, for scientists working on clean energy solutions. God, in your mercy. We pray for this nation and all nations, for presidents, governors, and legislatures, for juries, judges, district attorneys, and public defenders, for military personnel, for those who are incarcerated. Guide us in ways of freedom that promote the common good. God, in your mercy. We pray for those in need for exiles, immigrants, refugees, and those seeking asylum, for victims of harassment, torture, and abuse, for those who are ill, especially Terry Duplante, Karen Caswell, Lois Pinar, Bert Zinker, Jim Langcore, Bob Pulowski, and those we name before you now, either aloud or in this moment of silence. For any near death and for all who grieve, God, in your mercy. We pray for children, for their safety at home and in child care settings, for their flourishing at summer programs and camps, for the many people who care for them, including parents and grandparents, child care workers and teachers, coaches, counselors, and mentors, pediatricians and psychologists. God, in your mercy. We give thanks for Elaine Peterson and Chris Anderson and all the saints and prophets who have received the free gift of God, which is eternal life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. May their lives of humble service inspire us in faith. God, in your mercy. Receive our prayers and answer us, O God. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Please share signs of that peace with one another.
aside from want or pain, lest I offend some other through the strain. Dear Lord, forgive if I have been perverse or shelter in 
Peace, share the good news.